Yes, so here we are, we're out on site and this is the first day of excavation. So we've got some dumpers, we've got some machines and I've got my good mate Dan and I've got Brad and I've got Wilson. <laughs> and uh, we do a lot of work together. Dan is all about landscaping but extremely good at excavations, so groundworks and that sort of stuff. So we're going to get over there. We had a little go yesterday. We had to cut a concrete slab out of the way before we can trench through it. We know that there's a water pipe in the way and a couple of drainage pipes. So as we go today, we're going to have to deal with them. Possibly we'll probably end up going through the water main. That's what normally happens if you're not lucky, but we'll deal with it. We'll fix it. We know how to turn it off. It will be no big deal. Now we've got to track all of our muck all the way around to the other side. We can't get through that way, the short distance. That's why we've got a couple of dumpers here. We'll use the one ton to fill the three ton. The three ton will then ferry everything off, enabling the machines to keep digging without waiting for the thing to come all the way back. So we're going to get on and get this dug out. We went through, we gunned through that yesterday. Yeah. Where It was funny because where we started drilling, it was eight inches thick at the other end. I, wow. I put a drill through it before we had the big breaker. Yeah. And I was like, oh my God, it's, it's unbelievable. We'd also drilled through in this corner and found that it was about sort of five inches thick. So I'm thinking this is potentially, because what this was, this is a footing. Yes. We've got a foundation underneath here and then someone has decided not to build here for some reason. So I thought this is their oversight. This is actually their oversight, but it's not. It, it was in places, it was just a crust, a couple of inches thick. It's a whole load of rubbish. We've made it a bit wider here, but that's the line, that's where we pulled a 600 to off of that, if you know what I mean, close to that. So, and this is all gonna come out anyway. We'll have it all out anyway. But so what we wanna do is the, all this hardcore, we'll stick in a pile where the dumpers are because yeah. we'll get that probably grabbed or we might crush it away if we've got some decent, crush it on site if we've got some decent sure. stuff. And as we start getting to the mucky stuff, which we can spread, we'll track that around down to there and um, that'll be pretty good. So we are, I know we've got a water pipe coming underneath here. It's, it's plastic okay. and it's, it's, it's basically running under towards this way. So if, if, one, if someone's, if Brad say, let's say Brad was here with your little machine doing a bit of, if someone else is spotting him and just checking, checking, yeah, yeah. if we can avoid it, brilliant. And if we, you know, I mean, ideally, we, if we find it, we want to just cut it, dig the trench and then attach it back. Yeah, get over it and... Uh, yeah. Yeah. And... Uh, so you can find it the dry way. Uh, yeah. Avoid it. Yeah. Yeah, just to try and... Um, there probably a bit, might be a bit of foul drainage towards the end here, which is we, we do need to keep this intact. I've had the manhole cover up and I've, I've sensed it. I think it actually runs underneath because it's not showing here. There's no soil stack. It must be inside. So they've gone out and they've gone over to the drain. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So hopefully, because that's all we need to watch, Brad, is just like as we're pulling away from here, if someone's got a shovel, just knocking it in until we... Yeah, just, just find, I, find I think we, I think there is some yeah. shingle here. We'll, we'll just scratch it off a little mm. bit by little bit and see what's underneath. Yeah, and that should be, should be pretty good. Um, and then on the other trip, oh, one around here, Dan, similar sort of thing. I mean, obviously you, you, you'll decide which machine you'll put where, so you're, yeah. you're in charge. Yeah, well, that's what I bought the little one for right there, really, isn't it? Yeah. So what, when we get back near that corner. Yeah, so what we want to do is get this out of the way on the hardcore pile yes. first. We yeah. just broke it all up so it was done. Yeah. And then we'll, um, I'll, I'll get rid of this loo, get this off, because this is the line in the trench, and we'll set this out. I've identified where that oil pipeline is. Yeah, we saw that last night, that's perfect. So, Good. and it's out of the way of our trench, because we're yeah. coming along, and then we're rich, literally returning through here. So, um, yeah, this is probably going to be the trickiest one. Might be able to, yeah. Deep. Yeah, it's not deep. It's not nah, no, nah. I mean, the, I think the invert's naff, and, um, but it'd be nice if we can leave it going. Yeah, I mean, if, it, yeah, I reckon if you're, I think it just literally goes off in that direction Perfect. from memory. So maybe a tunnel under and leave it. Yeah, yeah. Or if we pull it out and put it back later, I can sort all that out. So okay. I've got loads of fittings and bits and pieces if, if we need them, you know. Perfect. And I can cobble this back together afterwards and just stick it over into the manhole, so. Okay. But that doesn't affect us today anyway. Well, it might work, Brad, moving the hardcore with the bigger machine first. Yep. Just get that in the dumper. Yep. Yeah. Come across that soil there. Right, mate. So you try and squeeze between that and the patio, and um, we've got to we've got a couple of balls with us. So we can... little, Wicked. Yeah, that is going to become obsolete. That is, Brad. It's actually on the line. If um, what what we've got here is when this trench comes through, hits this footing, 
then the building comes along and then it that's, and then it then it trenches back through here to meet that trench and this is yeah. just a basic <clears throat> rectangle okay. so that is going to be in the line of fire yep. this is one we put in when we did the garden room this is the one that's live to the garden room yep. and pick at the moment so this one is picked up into here okay and when that one when we get that one out of the way we'll cobble the other ones back together just to keep them temporarily on but um over the in, you know in the footing sort of thing but yep. that can come out it's no problem because everything even the kitchen sink will temporarily just divert that out of the way it can go into a water butt for a you know for a little while and then we can get rid of it so okay kush cool. d all right Sweet. so um we'll have a little go won't we and uh, coffees and teas first that's the first job yeah. that's, the, the, that's the first job all right So we found the water pipe. It wasn't where I expected it to be. It's really close to the surface. If you can see, they've sort of run it over the top of their old foundation here. So it's not really deep enough. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna have another one mold in at the right depth, back to where the stop valve is outside. So that's it. This is the foul, this is the foul drainage. This is a, some sort of land drain scenario. I'm in the trench, we've dug this one out. It's come out really nice, it's absolutely perfect and ready for inspection and some concrete. undertaking the excavations I started noticing that the ground was not that brilliant and I had to make a decision about what we should do leaving the trenches in case it rained and I took the decision to shutter the trenches this is only because I have a lot of experience of rain we had the weekend to wait until the concrete could arrive the building inspector had been out and checked the first lot of trenches he was happy but I just was not taking any chances so I embarked on a very simple bit of shuttering and so what we've got now is we've got the line pump set up the pump is on the drive we'll have a look at that in a second we're going to have the concrete pump through now where I've had to line these trenches with some ply this ply is literally holding back anything that wants to fall in we've got a really nice clean bottom here there's no water in it and the idea is as the concrete fills it up and pushes against that ply these supports if you like these struts we've got some 50 by 50 and they are literally just squashed in between those two ply surfaces as soon as the concrete comes through, I'll give those a little gentle tap. Out they'll come, they'll float to the top and we'll hook them out with a rake. And then the boards are being held by all of the weight of that concrete. So there's nothing from the edges gonna cave in. So we're gonna get on now, get all this concrete in, pray that the rain doesn't carry on and we'll be laughing.
What a nice bit of gear. Lovely bit of stuff. I think that will be good. Now that is perfect. perfect. Yeah, perfect. So now we'll just clean a bit of that trench there and we'll start there. So every now and then we have to do a foundation in a couple of hits, if you like, for various reasons. Sometimes it's access, sometimes you can't dig one section without finishing another. So every time that we have that, what the engineer advises is that we actually put some dowels into the end of the foundation. So when the next one is cast in situ, it actually all locks itself together. So what I'm going to be doing is drilling a series of holes in the end of this foundation. It's had a couple of three days to go off now and we are going to chem fix some bar in the end of these and that'll be absolutely uh, brilliant. Now what I've also got to do as well is make sure that all of my shutters as we pour this can be slid up out the way. And how I've done that is I've made H, we'll call it like a H section, and they've just got a couple of screws in, and then we'll ease them out as the concrete starts coming in, filling up, pushing against these shutters, which are holding this unfirm ground. Then we'll just slide these out and the weight of that concrete will do what these are doing. So the first job, I'm gonna pilot these out where I want them, and then drill them out to the right size, clean out the holes which is really important and then use some chemical resin to actually push them in and let them set. So I'm starting with a small drill bit and eventually I'm going to get up to something a little bit bigger. Now the idea is that we clear out these holes completely, no dust, and then we will drill them slightly bigger than the bar, the rebar that we're putting in. And that means that when we put the Chemfix in, we turn the bar in and it all oozes out and that sets it. So. Um, we're going to pilot them first. I'm going to put five pins in here. Now, you can cast the pins in before, but when we come to excavate, it's really tricky. You can't get a machine in that easily without hitting the bars. So I prefer to do them afterwards by, as you see here, drilling and gluing. <laughs> So I've been down the hole, drilled them all out, blown them all out. Now I'm going to cut some rebar 
and then we're going to use the resin to set the rebar in place and it will be lovely. So I really do like using like a chemical resin and um, the modern ones, so this is a modern one I've got in my hand here, it's in a normal cartridge tube and you don't actually need a special gun. Some of them, because they're mixing two compounds, some of them have two chambers and as you're driving them through you actually have a gun which has got a piston and a separate piston. But this new, this particular one by Everbuild, don't need that you can just go straight in obviously snip the top off whack it in the gun and it's going to mix it and it's all going to be absolutely fine so i'm going to get in here now i've cleaned all the holes out with the pump obviously it's really important and now i've been cleaned i'm just going to blow them one more time if there's any moisture and dust it would have dried out by now and we are going to put this in now i've got two tubes and five holes so i want to roughly put in each about a third of a gun in each one. So if I mark that up in a minute so I don't squirt too much, I mean, basically you wanna try and fill as much as possible, but they're quite deep holes here. So I will get quite a long way down the, you know, the hole itself. I'm going into this concrete as far as I can go. The engineer specified around about 400 millimeters. I'm probably just a bit less than that because I can only get so far with the shutters here which are holding back this unstable ground. Now the idea is you want to get a little bit squeezed out because as it mixes, let's just squeeze a bit onto here. It's going to change color. What you want is that silver color. It starts to come in now, there we go. There we go. So that's the two compounds mixed. Now we're ready. So you fill the holes up and then you basically, you're gonna be turning in your rebar into all that lovely chemical, getting all the air out. And that is gonna go rock solid. And then we'll just clean off all the excess around them. And it'll be rock solid. So we're gonna get a bit of gear coming in. Here it comes, I can feel it. I can feel it. There we go. It's getting closer and closer. There's some sort of jam on there. It might be the, um, grease. grease yeah. well, that's all right. I don't like jam. I've got a joke about jam and marmalade. I was about to say the same thing. I'll tell you it later. Yeah, yeah, but it's not for <laughs> it's not for a family show, unfortunately. Subtle differences between them. Yeah. There we go. Sounds a bit lively now. We'll put about 200 mil in the bottom, just up to the bottom, to near where the shut. Here we go. Here we, the shutters go. Just mind your eyes for a second. Yeah, it's here.
Right. That was the lowest one, isn't yeah. it? to hold there. Hold it there please. Now give me that rake. I'm just going to put it down the trench a tiny bit more. Just hold it there for a sec, tell him. Hold it there. Oh, that's a bit wet that there. Yeah, that's all right. Right. Now, if we pull out the first couple, yep. so I'll come around your side. So we can slide up this one a bit. Slide up this one a bit, that's it. Then we'll hook out this little baby down here. Might be up. So that's how we hook them out. Pop it out of the way. Got another low one here. Again, we'll hook that out. Yeah, this is like playing Jenga, isn't it? <sighs> All right, let's have him, give it, let's have a little bit more then. Yeah, let's have a bit more, please. That's it. Mm -hmm. You got that? Okay, mate. Oh. Okay, mate. Cheers. <laughs> yeah, it's a bit stiff in the middle there. Yeah. Let's start pulling up the other shutter in a minute. That's underneath your. That's it, mate. Yeah. I've got that one. That's good. Yeah. Ten, we'll hold it. Hold it there, please, mate. I'm gonna pull a bit out of here. Get rid of one of these. There's another couple of bits here I wanna lose. And then put it through the trench. This is the rake. Concrete rake. I use it in the garden sometimes. Frozen leaves. It's a myth that people think that concrete levels itself. And that's a myth. We'll get the laser on now because in a minute Sorry if I've got one of those builder's bums, everyone, but when you're doing a job like this, you don't really care about things like that. 
And um, this is the summer now, so I'm working out. We've got miles to go yet, haven't we? That's good. Oh, I can reach it now. <laughs> I'll put it all through from there. Yeah. A beautifully shattered foundation. And then the weight of the concrete was obviously now doing the job of the sticks. Which is what you want, boys. Oh, look at that. So satisfying, isn't it? Great, well done. You enjoying yourself? Definitely. Good. A few today. Hey? Eh? It is, mate. No, and the concrete is beautiful. Look at that. No, you're right. We wait till we're nearly there. Yeah. I reckon. Not far off. Tell him to hold it there. Hold it there, please, mate. Let's have our shutters all the way out now. We'll put them out of the way here. We'll reuse them for another day. And then what we'll do is we'll just pull everything over. And then I reckon we might be able to have what we've got left in the, in the gear. We're not far off, I reckon. Too much? Oh, well he can finish then, can he? Yeah, he's finished. Great. I mean, I mean like, you won't miss money if you're in, but... No. Unless you want to put it in there, and then it's basically... Yeah, it's fine, mate, yeah. That's no problem at all. We've got about, a, we've got probably an inch or two to go here, time I've got this. Cool. Cool. Alright, I'll pump the hopper down then I'll start getting the... Uh, Magic, mate. Do you want any, any extra on there, yeah? We might as well, mightn't we? Yeah. I can dig it off there. <laughs> Lovely job. So it's really handy to have a simple device. This is just an off cut of roofing batten. We all have that all over the site normally. And a couple of bits of OSB and it makes the perfect leveling staff. You can't really just use a stick. Concrete is too, well it's too soft. So your stick's gonna to be too deep. Whereas this, you can almost sit it straight on the top of the concrete. And you can also use it as a device for tamping as well. So if you wanna get around something, underneath something. Oh, let me turn off the sounder. Yeah, so if you wanna get underneath something here, you can. So a useful device, wash it off, use it again, throw it away, make another one, takes a few seconds but it's a lovely device to have on site for concrete in, whether it's a slab or indeed a foundation. So that's it. That's the final bit of the foundations done. We had a bit of aggravation with it. Um, as soon as I discovered the ground was really poorly, we had to start thinking about shuttering and making it work as effective as possible. 
you can be lucky with clay sometimes and it is super solid and it holds itself up but we had clay here which just seemed to want to just pull itself away and even with the slightest bit of rain forecast i couldn't take any chances and so therefore we had to put a proper shutter in and we made these simple frames these are 600 wide which is effectively the finish width of the foundation we put our boards in against those nicely cut sides we slid these in we popped a couple of screws in and then we basically were able to come through the trench now what we did then when we finished filling the trench was as we were filling the trench we start pulling these up now where they get a bit tight we then cut a smaller a single piece like this and we make that around about half an inch or 10 millimeters longer and we knock that in next to this one and what that effectively does is just give you that bit of space to slide these ones out and the beauty of using this section here it's like a, a H twice is you can just pull them up pour the concrete pull them up and it's not going to fall out the idea is you don't want any of this material left in the trench in the concrete you want as much of that to be as solid as possible so I hope you enjoyed that I'm glad I'm out of the ground now. I'm looking forward to getting to, on to the next episode, getting this scaffold up here, getting the footings in and building this job.